so much for joining us today. My name is Rory Blaine. I'm the director of Sedition Art. Sedition Art is a digital art platform. It is, in fact, the original digital art platform. Uh, most of you, if you're used to digital art, then you've probably encountered it within the last three to four years, for the most part. Uh, certainly since the, the NFT craze and that bubble really came to light. Uh, Sedition set up in 2011, so we've been doing this for uh, 12, 13 years now, and we predate the entire rise of NFTs. Um, my own background is always from the art world. <clears throat> I started my life out as a, a performing artist. I was a dancer, so bouncing around on stage in a tutu and ballet tights. I won't do that today, I promise. Um, and uh, segued from there into our family business, which was a bricks and mortar art gallery. Uh, and over there, we founded Sedition to really take care of the digital market uh, and then discovered uh, my colleague here, Dylan, who's the director and founder of Muse Frame. Over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming and joining us for this talk. And thank you for experiencing the Muse Frame Gallery, if you've seen it um, already. I did try and convince Roy to come out in a tutu to break the ice, but unfortunately, he didn't want to. Um, I think you know it's important to realize that digital art has come a long way and it's not just the NFT craze over the last few years. You know, when you meet people and everyone asks how long you've been doing it for and you say three years and it's like, wow, you've been around for so long. Um, you know, people like Rory who started uh, Sedition in 2011. I mean, full OG in the space, so we're really appreciative to work with Rory and obviously has a contemporary art background prior to that. Um, we wanted to do a talk today just on, you know, the whole origins of digital art, where we started, where it went through, where it's going. Um, and I think it actually started in the 1920s. Oscar Fischinger was the first German kind of artist messing around with film and, and digital art. And then it went to the 50s where it was uh, Nam June Pike and um, he was doing really cool things with televisions and warping them with magnets and that was the first digital art installation. Uh, from there, there was artists like Bill Viola. Um, fortunately, uh, Rory actually represented Bill Viola with Sedition, so I'd love for you to talk about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've been really lucky with the artists that we've had relationships with. Uh, Sedition was initially founded with artists who are all very grounded within the digital sphere. Uh, that was a very deliberate choice. Uh, when we set up Sedition and we were doing digital limited editions, Nobody knew what they were. Um, NFTs weren't around. The idea of a digital work, I mean, back in 2011, people expected anything that was online should be free. The idea of selling something that was a collectible asset in digital form, this was anathema to that entire audience. Um, one of the reasons that we did this, as I said, was our relationship with people like Bill Viola. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's considered the founding father of certainly video art. Before him, people like Nam June Pike were early pioneers in this area. And as Dylan was saying, the whole gamut of history for digital art actually goes back a lot, lot further than the average, certainly the average NFT collector would realize. Which brings us up to the present day. NFTs, uh, crypto, uh, the entire digital world that we're all now living and working in. Why did we want to do this? Why did we want to step into this? Well, let me start by saying that I'm personally, and never have been, that enamored of NFTs. I love them. I love what they do. But ultimately, for me, what really sold me in this whole space, what lights my fire, what gets me out of bed in the morning is a love of art. I'm into the art and I'm into the artists. NFTs are brilliant, but ultimately they're just a mechanism. It's a way to attach the provenance, the history, the price passage, the artist's uh, authenticity and originality, the creator of the content. All of that is now identifiable and attached to a digital asset. Long overdue and a brilliant move in the art world. But, for Sedition at least, it's uh, created a bit of a divide. We predate the NFTs, so half of our collecting audience is uh, you know, very, very enthused and really wants to jump into the crypto space with both feet. The other half of our collecting audience, and for that matter, the artists themselves, are utterly allergic. They don't want to touch NFT or cryptos with a barge pole. Now, that's an ideological position. I personally think in the long run it's going to smooth out. I think NFTs are here to stay, and I think uh, certainly blockchain as a... Uh, a record keeping and a ledger tool will be underpinning most of our lives for the next few decades is my personal belief. So I think that will shift across. But in the meantime, we didn't want to alienate any half of our audience. So we've got a foot in both worlds. We allow NFTs to be minted on the platform. And we also have artworks that can just be digital editions. Um, and it was the NFT market and that new development that really kind of brought me around to discovering Muse Frame. Dylan, what's your experience of NFTs? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously we started MuseFrame, uh, you know, we were collecting top shots, we were collecting, you know, these cool NFTs, artifacts, and we realized, you know, you'd open up the top shot and it'd show you this really cool animation uh, on your computer. And we really thought, like, that's when we started diving in and we collected artworks like The Currency by Damien Hirst, um, which is a really cool project, you know, obviously determining the difference between the physical and the digital. And we just thought there needed to be a dedicated frame and screen and software to enjoy that art um, that people were collecting and spending so much money on. You know, you, you, you get this piece of artwork and you, you show it on your phone and it's locked in your wallet. And it's not really how the artists intended it f to be. You know, artists create to, to, for people to enjoy their artwork, not for it to be an asset and to just be traded and made money on. Um, I think there's two sides to that, that coin, which we've sort of started exploring. So. We started MuseFrame and it was, we were very naive. It was NFT only, provenance and everything like that. And we, we quickly realized that people wanted to do, enjoy art that was on chain, off chain. People wanted to enjoy you know, stuff that they had created. Um, and that's when we started to dive deeper and what else is out there in the realm of digital art. Um, and that's when we, we found out Sedition and we put them on the vision board of let's, let's contact them and see what they're doing. And fortunately we became, and now we're here, we're partners and we're working together. And a lot of our collectors, you know, they just want to, um, they want to experience art. They don't, some of them don't even know anything about NFTs. They just want a, a beautiful display. They want to see the art and they want to turn it off and turn it on and, and not have to worry. So we're finding, I think we have a lot of information of where this market is going just from where our sales are going. And a lot of them are just these contemporary art collectors that are interested in digital art. And there's this whole education piece that we're sort of trying to help and working with companies like Sedition. Um, to bridge that gap and, and show that there's more to, you know, just owning NFTs and trading NFTs. You can stream art and you can trade art and you can license art and everything like that. Um, it's been really interesting, obviously, working with Rory coming from 20, 30 years in contemporary art and then starting digital art 2011 and then seeing the NFT and how that boosted the company and then how that sort of dropped off. And um, so that's been a really good journey for us to get that background knowledge um, from Rory. Um, and now it's even more exciting with AI and everything like that. Um, how, how, how do you think the future is of NFT? Well, actually, the future of this space, I wouldn't have a clue how to predict it, but we intend to cater for the audience within it. That's very much the idea behind Sedition. What Dylan just said there is the, the absolute apotheosis of why we're working together with MuseFrame. It's that value. It was that simple fact that they realized immediately, hey, this is not about whether it's an NFT or whether it's a digital edition or whether it's about art and you should be able to put the art that you love up regardless of how it's formatted or, or in what way you're storing it. It was that, uh, that value, that decision, that love for art above all things that drew us to Muse and is why we've got together on this. I mean, the new developments you're seeing in this space, uh, NFTs obviously are just a slim part of it, generative art, uh, the rise of AI in art, all of these areas are all being tackled by the artists on our platform at the moment. They're all, there's a famous quote about contemporary art that I usually roll out at these conferences. It's from the Indian statesman, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, and he said that art or contemporary art is the truest mirror of society's mind. And this is absolutely true. If you look at contemporary art in a gallery or digital art or anywhere where new artists are making new work, that work will uniformly and universally tackle the issues of society, political, socioeconomic, moral, ethical, sexual, anything that society is facing, you will see reflected in the contemporary art divide. And it's that that really fascinated us and brought us together. As for what's happening in the space, I've long since tried not to predict what's coming next because I'm almost 100% wrong. Fortunately, I don't have to. I just have to offer the platform and the artist will then tell me what comes next. And that's why we're so excited to partner with Muse. What Muse have done here is to create a, a paradigm, a world in which the artists and the collectors, uh, platforms like ourselves can all meet up, integrate and get together in this same space. It's a portal that loans into the art world. You're not just buying works, collecting NFTs, you're discovering the artist's practice, you're discovering the history of the work, the provenance, the history, the market. It's a much, much wider and richer world than most people are experiencing at the moment. Couldn't agree more. Um, I think we've got a QR code here and on the, all the frames is a QR code. What we wanted to do today is actually get people started with an art collection. And so if you scan the QR code, put your email address in, Sedition will actually gift you a piece of artwork um, whether it's a $5 artwork, a $100 artwork, there's a, a, every single person will get a piece of artwork. So make sure you scan this or scan the frame, or the Muse frame, and then collect your artwork. Um, 
I think that's, that's concluding. We just wanted to thank you for coming to our chat, first and foremost, experiencing the art on the Muse frames and, yeah, being here for the journey. Thank you very much. Just a word of warning, when you scan that QR code, it's going to take us a couple of days. It's a manual process, so when I get back home and we do the office, we'll send out the artworks and tell you exactly what you've got and what it is. It could be anything from a $5 artwork up to a $500 artwork. It's totally oh, random. There you go. There you go. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, please do sign up. We're very happy to gift it to you. There's no cost. There's no nothing. All you'll need is an email address and you're off. Thank you very much.